Uh, the anti-emulation stuff looks pretty cool. Might go back and take a look at this. Uh, it's not that cool, unfortunately. Hi folks, and welcome to Open Analysis Live, or rather a Twitch clip from our Twitch stream. We're streaming Thursdays and Sundays. Go check us out if you like this kind of stuff. And also a reminder that we have over 200 hours of live stream recordings on our Patreon, as well as in-depth reverse engineering tutorials. If you like this kind of stuff, go check it out. Now let's get back to the clip. Uh, you can stop me if I've talked about this before, but basically, um, new emulation that we're doing now, like all the emulation work that we're doing now, uh, didn't exist. It wasn't even in the minds of anyone, uh, reverse engineers or malware analysts, uh, back in the day when malware was first becoming a business. However, most AVs, probably all of them, all the ones that I ever looked at, have an internal emulator that they use to run the first X number of instructions in a piece of malware to get better signature identification. And those uh, those emulators, because they're basically, uh, and I'm talking like 2005, 2008, from then on, those emulators were pretty much standard in all AV. So if you wanted to build some malware that bypassed the AV, you really had to have some simple anti-emulation stuff, but it has, but it could be very simple. So those types of emulators are nothing like the ones that we're using. They're like super pared down. They have a very small subset of instructions that or APIs that they support based on you know based on which whichever emulator. The Windows Defender one, by the way, there's some research done on it. is is pretty robust. Uh, there's lots of tells in it, but it's pretty robust. So. And, in order to emulate past um, uh, stuff that they don't they don't have implemented in the in the emulator, the way that the AV guys do it is they just return it's all good if they don't have or usually they do they return it's all good if they don't have that API implemented, which is why these uh, emulators uh, these emulator checks that. Uh, that are for AV are usually like very, very weird sort of um, checks. Like, uh, let me see, is it is it here? Where's the fucking, where's the check for it? It was like uh, create pipe or something like that. Um, yeah, if you guys didn't know this, I, I've talked about this on stream before, but if you didn't, if you didn't know this, um, yeah, you, there's no way to know this without actually having some like background in the in the industry. This is a good example. So if you try and like uh, open a file, use create file to open a file for this this random file, uh, th this isn't this isn't gonna work, right? You're, you're gonna get an error. And if you try and like call uh, erase tape on that file, uh, you're gonna get an error, uh, right? Like there's that just this doesn't exist, right? However, in an emulator, like they don't know that that file is not supposed to exist. So oftentimes the emulator will be like, cool, here's a handle. <laughs> the handle is two, <laughs> right? Because they, the, they just want the code to run as far as possible so that they can get their signatures on the memory of the, of the code. And then like, and then they're gonna call like erase tape, which is what I was saying before. That, that probably didn't make sense to you guys before when I was saying that. So yeah, I'm glad I'm explaining it now. So the reason why when you see an obscure API call in malware, why I always kind of think of emulation is because like these things are rarely implemented in an emulator, right? Like if you want to implement every single Windows API call, your emulator is going to be too big and, and unpredictable, right? So probably they don't have fucking erase tape implemented. So if you call erase tape on a file that doesn't exist, the emulator is gonna be like, I erased it, cool, <laughs> I did it. So you're gonna get a zero, so a status success back from erase tape, and that zero is not gonna pass this if statement and it's gonna not run the code, right? It's gonna kick you out. So you see that kind of, you see this type of behavior a lot in uh, malware that was like, uh, I, they still use it today, but you used to see it a lot in like older malware because they really were trying to evade like antivirus. Now you see other tricks being used like the giant files and stuff like that, or they're, they're more clever about wasting the emulator time. But these types of like 
hilarious like obscure API calls or like expecting error codes. That's the other thing. Like here they're expecting, see how they actually check the error code and they expect it to be something? Like this is another thing that happens a lot with emulators. This this is actually one of the worst um, ones. We see this, used to see this everywhere. It's like they would call a uh, API that's with something that will cause an error, right? Like there's no way that this is gonna work under normal circumstances. And then they'll check the last error to see whether it matches what they expect. And of course, if you're running an emulator, there's no way in hell you're going to write every like 10,000 fucking if statements for every type of corner error case that could happen for each API, right? It's just, it's not possible. You either are gonna emulate the DLL and let it do it do that for you, uh, which does happen now, right? That happens in Windows Defender, that's why it's so much better. But, but these smaller AV companies that don't do that, that just implement the APIs from hand, like some guy just writes like, if, <laughs> if argument one is this, then said error code this, right? With those guys, they're not writing out every error case. So you'll see a lot of times like they'll check the error and like obviously under normal circumstances you're gonna get an error that you expect. But if you're running in an emulator, the error will be like a uh, generic error. <laughs> you know, it'll be like, or sometimes it will be no error at all. Sometimes there'll be no, like for example, like the erase tape, like it'll be like no error. <laughs> So checking that is like usually how they how they defeat these these emulators in uh, in AV, um, just to give you the whole backstory of, of how uh, how it all works. Yeah, four or four. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's um, this this used to be a pretty taboo thing. Um, the, the, you have to remember, I'm kind of old, so so things were were really different. There were a lot more. Um, there were a lot less uh, open when I first started in the industry, and it used to be pretty taboo to analyze antivirus and like talk about it like people would get quite angry at you if you did that um so if you looked at it you usually kind of just told your told your friends about it or whatever um and i i had personally looked at a few antivirus stuff and like some of them uh it was very complicated and it's hard to make sense of but some of them have very self-contained small emulators like the emulation uh surface is very small so unless like the malware is basically really behaving well uh it's pretty easy to detect that you're inside an av emulator for for some avs and again things could have changed i mean this is like over 10 years ago or whatever when i was looking at this stuff but like no well yeah let's let's say over 10 years ago <laughs> um, but anyway things are different now i mean now people publish research on on avs right there's all that nice stuff written about windows defender and stuff like that but anyway a little bit of history there anytime you see stuff like this uh you know where they're where they're expecting a specific error you know you're like why would you write code to cause an error and then check that that error is correct is this is the one you're expecting well that's usually anti-emulation behavior so hopefully kind of summed it up for you guys. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Just a reminder that we are live on Thursdays and Sundays on Twitch. And if you like this kind of stuff, go check out our Patreon. We have lots more reverse engineering content, over 200 hours of live streams, as well as in-depth reverse engineering tutorials. All right, until next time, keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware. Stay curious.